Hello friends and welcome back to Marsiology. Today we are going to have a chat about fractals. In this video, we are going to be breaking down protein down to a T. We'll talk about how to properly calculate your daily protein intake and how eating more protein is going to help you lose weight. And lastly, where you can find all of these good proteins. So it has come to my sense is that the word protein seems to confuse some people. There's a little bit of a bias and a misconception towards this word and this idea of protein where it's only for bodybuilders or if you're on a diet, you gotta eat more protein. Or, you know, there's just a lot of theories out there that I don't think is true and justifies what protein is and how beneficial it actually is for us, our bodies, for life. If drinking proteins gave you gains that easily, I don't think fitness would be a billion dollar industry. So let's go way back when protein derived from a Greek word called proteos, meaning primary or first place. Nowadays in science, protein is referred to as the building blocks of life. Now to me, that sounds majestic AF. They are also known as amino acids or enzymes. So we all know that the body needs oxygen to survive, but have we ever heard about nitrogen? So nitrogen is essential in our body for growth and reproduction. Amino acids, these chains of chemicals all contain an element of nitrogen in them. Once we consume these proteins, these chains break down, we take the nitrogen and use it as part of protein synthesis, a process that influences the growth, the hormones, and our immune system. But here's the catch. Nitrogen gets excreted from our bodies on a daily basis. So that means we need to consume more protein-filled food in order to maintain a positive nitrogen balance. Basically, without amino acids and the nitrogen it brings inside our body, we are obstructing the growth, the repair process, the different biochemical processes that happens internally in our body. There are 20 essential amino acids that synthesizes different proteins in our body and serves different functions. They sound something like this. Now what do all these proteins do? First of all, growth and maintenance of the body. When we're injured, when we go through surgery, um, when we go through training and cells break down because of all the force, when someone's pregnant, when you get ill, proteins come in and make tissues to help repair all this destruction that happens internally. It is also a catalyst for biochemical reactions. It speeds up and starts the process for digestion, energy production, blood clotting, muscle contraction. Hormones are also proteins, testosterone, steroids, estrogen, sex hormones. Without these messengers, our organs, our tissues, our cells, they cannot communicate with each other and they cannot communicate to our mind. Ever wonder why your hair starts falling off, your nails are a little bit brittle, your skin's not as good as it's supposed to be? Well, that might be a case of protein deficiency. Keratin, collagen, elastin. These are proteins that benefit you where you can see them. Proteins also regulate the pH level in our blood and in our body fluid. To protect your body from infections and inflammation, proteins also form antibodies to fight infection and protect your immune system. Not only are proteins messengers, they are also transporters of vitamins, minerals, blood sugar, cholesterol, and oxygen from the head to your toe. Where do you get your energy from? Just carbs? Nah. Proteins as well. Protein and carbs actually both provide 4 kilocalories of energy per gram. Now obviously you want to use carbs and fats for energy, especially when you're training, because protein gets depleted very quickly and we have to replenish them. But when the human body is forced to fast, protein starts breaking down instead of muscles to help provide you with energy so that you don't die in the case of starvation. So please know that if you eat on an irregular basis, you won't be able to maintain your muscle mass very efficiently. Proteins can help you lose weight? Yes, they can. Proteins actually boost your metabolism and they reduce your appetite. When you eat proteins, there are some weight regulating hormones that help increase the level of your fullness hormones and decrease the level of your hunger hormones. By changing your diet into a high protein diet, 40% protein, 30% 
carbohydrates, 30% fat, your body will feel a significant reduction in hunger to be at a caloric deficit automatically. As per the muscle versus fat video, I talk about how the body is an energy converter. When protein speeds up the metabolism in our body, it has a higher thermic effect than carbs or fat, which means 20 to 30% of the protein that you just ate are already burning itself while it's being digested. This is called the calories in and calories out effect. Basically, proteins already have fewer calories compared to carb-heavy and fat-heavy food. As the end result, protein is already burning itself, but carbs tend to stay in our body. So we're reducing the calories that we're taking in, and we're already boosting the calories going out through digestion. The long-term solution to weight loss is just to be mindful of what macronutrients you're putting into your body and the percentage of how you allocate that. All right, take your phones out or your calculators out because we are going to calculate how much protein you need per day. So if you weigh yourself by pound, you just want to multiply that by 2.2 and then you'll get your weight in kilograms. Once you have your weight in kilograms, we are going to multiply that by one if you're not fairly active. If you don't have a regular exercise program, then you might not need as much protein as an athlete. If you're an individual that regularly partakes in exercise, you want to multiply your weight by kilos to about 1.5 to 1.8 to 2 to 2.2, depending on the level of intensity of your exercise and how often you exercise. So my daily caloric intake is about 1350 and 40% of that is about 540 calories. Now I don't really calculate my food in calories, I tend to measure it with my eyes so that would be like a solid 20 grams of protein for me. It's always great to check the nutrition facts to see how many grams of protein you are getting per serving of say a fish or a piece of chicken or a turkey or whatever you're buying. Now, how to pick the right protein packed foods for you. When you're choosing high protein foods, it's best to pick healthier options. That means staying away from the frozen aisle, from the processed, from the boxed aisles. You want to buy fresh pieces of of meat or lentils or vegetables that provide protein. Healthy sources of protein includes grass-fed meats and pasture-raised poultry. Eggs are also a great source. Wild fish, again with the omegas, the DHA and the EPAs. Legumes, nuts, whole grains. Some whole grains have a whack full of protein like quinoa and chia seeds and flax seeds. Those are also really great sources of protein. Please try to avoid high fat meats and dairy products. Bad cholesterol comes from meats that are not cooked properly. The process of using very high heats to cook your food will damage the protein. Not only are you consuming the bad cholesterol from the method of cooking, you're actually going to intake less of the protein than it promises you because of how you cook it. Anything in moderation is a good amount. That's why it's very important to calculate what your daily protein intake is and to make sure that you are not going past that. Here's a list of my favorite protein packed foods. All right, now let's talk about protein powders. Protein powders are not just for bodybuilders. Protein powders are the most efficient way to help you repair those muscle tears and to help you maintain your muscle. Like I said, proteins are the building blocks of life. They're essential to how our body grows, including our muscles. So if you're trying to grow muscle and you're not a fan of protein, that's not gonna happen, straight up. How do you pick the right protein powders for you? It basically comes down to whey protein isolates and whey protein concentrate. Whey protein isolate, in a nutshell, just has a more intricate filtering process that takes out more fats and carbs and gives you more of the proteins. So these proteins will have a higher concentrate, about 90 to 95%. They're typically also more expensive, but you get more bang for your buck. Now for protein concentrates, this extraction process uses heat, enzymes, or acids to take out proteins from whole food. These would supply you about 60 to 80% of protein concentrate, but the rest of that 
could be carbs and fats. If you look at the nutrition facts on the protein powders, you'll see that some of them also contain BCAAs. Branch chain amino acids are basically a group of essential amino acids that our body does not produce that we need to take through dietary supplements. These are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. CAA supplements have been shown by scientific research to decrease muscle fatigue, to help build muscle, and to reduce the feeling of muscle soreness. You can choose to buy BCA in a separate bottle and drink that during your workouts or just throughout the day, or you can also find protein powders that already have BCA in them. Since I'm supposed to take about 80 grams of protein a day, that's actually a lot, and sometimes I do forget to eat. So protein shakes are really great to help remind me of taking my protein. One scoop of whey protein isolate is about 28 grams of protein. Sign up, the best time to drink your protein shakes. First things in the morning, they are super easy to digest and give you a nice boost before you go out for the day. Also, right after you work out, you have a one hour frame where proteins are going to be absorbed in your body very efficiently. So post-workout, make sure you have that shake ready to go. An hour and a half after, then consume your whole food protein. It is also important to note that you cannot consume your daily protein intake just through supplements. Remember we talked about nitrogen? Whole foods have that nitrogen content. You want to keep a balanced diet through supplementing and through whole foods. If you're trying to build and maintain your muscle mass, if you are trying to lose weight through a diet, if you want to recover faster after a heavy exercise, and if you want to increase your strength in response to muscle training, drink your protein. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys will take protein a little bit more seriously than you did before this video. Stay active. Drink your proteins, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and I will see you.